the, the whole world is watching us, observing what destiny other free nation could face to live freely or to be subjugated. Ukraines haven't given up and won't give up. Gets the message loud and clear. Putin must lose. Ukraine's president there, Volodymyr Zelensky, in Washington, D.C. right now, he is pleading for Congress to break its deadlock and approve additional aid and funding for his embattled country. President Zelensky telling an audience at the National Defense University that when the free world hesitates, dictatorships celebrate. And his speech coming ahead of a meeting with President Biden at the White House, which will be happening later today. Joining me now, Andrei Dobriensky of the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America to talk more about Zelensky's visit to Washington and the critical nature of these discussions is always welcome. There is an article in the New York Times this morning that caught my attention suggesting that Ukraine is at the most perilous point since this war began in desperate need for U.S. support. Is there a lot of truth to that and at this critical time and juncture where Ukraine is? Well, it's definitely not a time where you want to have your biggest partner pull out. And that's really why President Zelensky is here. Uh, he's here because uh, if, if the United States doesn't pass this now, and it's more than likely, as you're reading in that article in The Times and a bunch of others, that the senators will need more time, even with many senators willing to stay through Christmas. It just takes a while to change U.S. asylum policy. It's not something you can negotiate overnight. But what kind of president would he be if he didn't come here to the United States while he has people manning the front lines in the middle of winter, sitting in trenches covered in snow? This is an obligation for a leader. And no matter what the situation is going forward for the next couple of months, and we are very worried about a hardened ground allowing tanks to roll over it that they couldn't do in the mud. So actually, winter is a very dangerous time for invasion. This is what he needs to be doing, because if the United States doesn't pass this now, we really worry about how can they pass something during an election season when when tempers and rhetoric just get elevated. Right. And it becomes less of a priority. And to your point on winter, Russia weaponized winter in the past. They'll do it again. But let's look at some of these numbers, Andre. By mid-November, the U.S. Defense Department had used 97 percent of the 62.3 billion in supplemental funding it had received for Ukraine and the State Department had used all of the 4.7 billion in military assistance funding it had been allocated to help Ukraine. So the question being, how do you respond to those who say Ukraine's ask is unrealistic? Look how much the U.S. has already given. It needs to fight on a tighter budget. Right, except that we do know from the United States' own admission that 90 percent of that money is remaining in the United States. This is money that goes to pay people's jobs, working class jobs, skilled jobs, metal workers who put together artillery shells, uh, people who are inv uh, invested in working for the United States defen in defense industry across many, many states. Uh, and so when we're talking about these negotiations, the thing to, for everybody to realize is what's being talked about are accounting measures. Uh, we're talking about how do we quantify and allocate value to things that the United States already has. For the most part, what we are giving Ukraine are things that are existing in warehouses. That happened with the dual-use munitions, what people call cluster bombs. That happened with the uh, with the attackums. We finally gave them 150-kilometer weapons, but unfortunately, they are so old, they wouldn't even be used by the United States. These are so, so what we're giving Ukraine are things and what the argument in Congress and what legislators do are trying to figure out how do we account for them in our accounting budgets. Um, so uh, for me, it's really kind of laughable when people talk about value of things because Ukrainians, for the most part, don't receive foreign money. They're, they've never had pallets of cash, the likes of which we saw the stories in Iraq and Afghanistan. This is about material support the kind that we did during World War II, the kind we've always done as a nation with our allies, and the kind we want to do for Israel as well. So uh, accounting be damned. Ukraine is going to get its support. We'll just see where it's going to come from. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.